Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I want to do is take you through a quick walkthrough of a simple grounding and bonding system in, well, this here we have a single residential panel, um, but this really applies to any type of grounding and bonding system. What I want to do is walk through normal operation with a load, which we have represented here by our toaster, uh, and then we want to run through operation when the system is in a ground fault condition. Uh, so let's take a look here. What I'm going to do is animate these conductors here. You'll see them kind of highlight as we move through the, uh, the path of current. Obviously this is an AC circuit, so current isn't always going to be flowing in one direction. This is just to capture the path of current flow. Uh, so we'll start here. We're going to start at our line 2 on our transformer here, our red conductor. Okay? And we see as it's highlighted, it makes its way down to the meter base. Now, this meter base is what makes the physical connection between these two points right here. Okay, with that meter base in place, we have current flow through, and now we see it make its way down the conductor where it gets to our main service disconnect, our breaker. Okay, when this breaker is energized or when it's turned to the on position, uh, what it's going to do is energize our feeder or our bus bar in this case. Uh, we have our 15 amp breaker. Anything that's really attached to this feeder right now would become energized but we have our 15 amp breaker attached and as soon as it's turned to the on position we have current flow down to our load where I've got it represented as just a resistor, it's a toaster so it's just a resistive load. Current flows through our load and returns back on our identified conductor where it makes its way across the grounding, con or, sorry, grounding bar back up the neutral, back to this point on the transformer where it completes that path and we now have toast. Okay, Our load has been energized. We now see that full path for current flow. It is just a closed loop with a certain amount of impedance across it that opposes current. Okay, So the next thing we want to do, we'll clear the system. We're going to look at what happens in a fault condition. So we'll go through the same method. We're going to highlight these conductors up to the meter base. The meter base makes that connection, comes down, energizes up to our breaker. Our breaker energizes our feeder, Hey, our conductor is energized, and we have a short circuit. Now, this could be a loose wire that touches a box. This could be frayed insulation where that bare conductor is coming into contact with this metal box. Okay? Now, our whole grounding and bonding system is designed to create a low impedance path. Okay? That low impedance path consists of all of our metal boxes, all of our metal raceways. Um, we're making sure that all of these set screws and all of these lock nuts are done up tight. It's all part of our bonding system. If it's all bonded properly, it gives us sufficient low impedance path back, and we're going to find out where. So it comes back on the box, lock nuts and set screws are done up, makes its way back on this conduit. This panel is metal and it conducts as well. So that fault current can make its way back in the actual panel. It's not going back on the identified anymore. And it gets to this point. Right here, we have this little brass screw. The whole purpose of this brass screw is to bond the back of our panel to that grounding bar. This grounding bar right here is connected to our neutral, remember. So fault current makes its way up the grounding bar, up the neutral, all the way back up to the supply transformer, completing the path and opening our breaker. Why did it open the breaker? Well, because we have this low impedance path. And we know Ohm's law tells us that if I have a very low impedance, I end up with a very high current. And we use that very high current to trip the magnetic portion of that breaker. Okay, so we'll reset the system. And what we're going to look at now is what happens if we lose this neutral conductor right here. So the neutral, maybe it's pulled out of the panel, who knows? But let's find out what happens. That was our path back to our supply transformer. Okay, so again, we're going to start right here. Current makes its way up to our meter. Our meter completes the connection. And that current makes its way down to our breaker. Our breaker energizes our feeder or our bus bar. And we energize our conductor. Again, we have our fault. Okay, our fault current is going to travel back on our box. It's going to travel back on our EMT or our metal raceway or our bonding conductor if it's a Lumex or something like that. It's going to make its way to this panel. This panel is going to conduct that fault current back again up to this point, our brass screw again. Now remember, we lost the neutral conductor, but we do have this little green conductor here. We call that our service raceway 
bonding jumper. The intent of this is obviously to bond the service raceway, but it also gives us a backup path in a situation like this where we lose the neutral, that fault current still has a place to go. It's not going to go to ground. It will go to ground eventually, but right now, if this path is intact, that fault current is going to make its way up the grounding bar, up that conduit, that surface raceway, which is metal, which is attached to this metal meter base, which if you notice right here, we have another brass screw. And the intent of that brass screw is to bond our meter base to our neutral conductor. And again, that fault current can make its way back the neutral, back to the supply, which trips the breaker. Okay, why did it trip the breaker? Same reason it did before. Again, we've created that low impedance path. We've bypassed this load by coming back on all of our metal non-current carrying components like our box, our EMT, our, our panels, things like that. 